Today I'm going to show you how games are added for the SNES Classic via Hackshi. And I have to say as a disclaimer, I would highly recommend you do not try this. I would suggest you just wait a week or two for the official release. Because there are a few bugs that are still being ironed out, but you'll see what I mean as I go through this video. Anyways, we're going to do the first part, which would be converting the games into the format that would work on the SNES Classic. And these are a Virtual Console Wii U format. So you're going to need a program called Python. So I have that, and I installed it to my C drive. I made this easier just by putting it directly in a Python folder. And you'll see why as I pull up my command line. So I'm going to go to my command prompt. And you've seen this in a few of my previous videos. These are typical DOS commands. You would uh, change your directory forward or backwards. You could just do CD for change directory. Then I have to do period, period to go back. And then I'm just going to go forward by typing in change directory, Python. Now I'm within the directory where I could convert the games from the SFC, SMC format to run into the SF. ROM format that works on the SNES Classic. And as you see me do this, it'll make more sense. So I'm going to go into that folder where I... the Python folder, and you have to have specific scripts. And these are being updated repeatedly based on bugs that show up, such as uh, right now, within the last few days, when people were trying to convert their games, they were finding that games like Street Fighter 2 were unable to be played two-player, but this up to date script which is this f s f c two s f r o m dot p y script corrects that and just looking at the code inside and I use notepad to look at this just games like Mega Man X2, Mega Man X3, Pilot Wings, Kirby's Dreamland, they have preset IDs, foot you know foot headers and all that. And you have to worry whether or not they're high or low ROMs. I mean, there, there's a lot, and it's going to take a whole other video to get into that. But, I mean, these are four games right there that get patched with the script. Then you have the Super Effects Chip games, which have a whole other thing right here. And these are the Hex Edit entries, pretty much. So, I mean, it's a lot to take in. But anyways, I have you have to have the script within the Python directory. That's what I recommend. And you're going to want to have like a text file open just so you can keep up with me on some of these things. But now that I have my Python installed to this directory, I copied the scripts that I'm using, especially this current SFC2 SFROM script. Now I'm going to minimize that. Then I have a working directory, which would be my SNES folder. And I have two games that I'm going to convert over. One's Run Saber and one's SOS. SOS is one of my absolutely favorite games. So I'm going to extract both of these here. And the first thing you're going to want to do is, if you've worked with uh, DOS prompts before, you'll realize that if you have spaces and other type of formatting weirdness, you'll have trouble converting these. So I want to make this simply SOS. And I'm going to make this just run saver and I'll put a uh, underscore. Now I have a text pad open to make this easier. So you pretty much want to call the Python executable. And I have that in my C directory. Then you have to call out the script, which is the Py script. Then you want to choose your input file. And then your output file. And we want the SFROM format. So I'm going to copy this. I'm just doing this right from the text pad to make this nice and easy. So first thing I'm going to do is convert this run saber file, which I have pre-scripted right on my notepad. I'm going to open up my command prompt, paste it here. It converted perfectly. If it wouldn't have converted, you would have gotten an error message. So that one is done. Now I'm going to convert SOS, and there's my SFROM format right there. I'm going to change this to just simply SOS. As I said, this whole process is not user-friendly whatsoever, and, I mean, it gets a little bit more complicated. 
So now we're going to do SOS. Same thing. Now we have two working ROMs, and they're not all going to work because of what I said before. Some games, such as Super FX games and all that, may need just a little bit of additional legwork to convert properly. But luckily, some awesome guys are working on the scripts and getting these updated. And this is going to really help out once we get Hashi integration officially released within the next few weeks. So anyways, I'm going to open up Hashi here. And I, since I'm doing a new format here, I did a prefix for SNESC, for SNES Classic. And we're going to go down to Add and Games. I'm going to click Add More Games. I'm going to go to the directory where I put those at. And we're going to see where it says Games and Apps. You're going to want to change this to All Files so you can see the SFROM files. I'm going to add SOS first. I'm going to add my prefix to it. And this doesn't mean anything yet, you'll see. And I'm going to add my artwork. Now I have that added. Now I'm going to add the other game. And we have to worry about the command line arguments as well, as you will see in a second. So we got those two games added. And I added these previously. I'm just going to get rid of the other ones that I previously added. So I have Run Saver and SOS added here. I'm not going to want anything else selected right now. I just want to work with those two specific files. Now I have a command line that uh, for a proper game after it's converted. And I'm just going to take my Run Saver command line and copy and paste this right to my notepad file just to see what I'm working with here. I'm going to put it right down here. And this is incorrect right now. You cannot load this game this way. But I'm going to go into my proper command line, which is right here. And I'm going to copy this Clover Canoe, which will call out the default SNES emulator. I'm going to do it all the way up into the name of the folder name. So this entire part right here, the USR bin, all the way up to USR share. I'm going to copy and paste that. And I'm going to replace at the point where Kakakachi, if that's how it's pronounced. I'm going to change that. And this is going to be my new command line for this game. And you have to add just an additional thing to it. And this could vary. Right now I'm just going to replicate right from another game, a standard game that comes with it. It would have the volume preset with the double hyphen. And if you see right here where it says rollback snapshot period, I believe this is in milliseconds. You could technically alter this number, and you could have anywhere from one second to five minutes. I mean, just bear in mind with that. So I'm going to make this the typical 16 seconds right there. I believe uh, I believe that's 600 milliseconds, which would equate to about 16 seconds. So we're going to add that to there as well. Now that we have that, I'm going to copy this entire command line. Now we have that accounted for. Now I'm going to go into the desktop file for it. And we're going to know that uh, the name of the ROM is where the desktop file is. And there is a new games SNES folder. So I'm going to go to this desktop file right here. I'm going to edit it with Notepad. And there's a few things that, there's two redirects on here that are incorrect. 
the path for the saves and all that, right after the zero, you're going to want to put a forward slash. And the part where the icon goes, you want to remove that NES Kekachechi, whatever. Sorry, I'm pronouncing it wrong. So you want to remove that. Then I'm going to save that. Now that one's done. Now we're going to work on the other one, which would be SOS. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to find out where SOS is. Oh, and the other thing I want to mention, I should have done this a second ago, when we go into the desktop file here. Right here, the name. Even though I have it on my thing as SNES Classic Run Saver, it needs to show up on the desktop file as well. So I'm changing this name right here. SNES Classic Run Saver. So that's how I want that for now. And I'm going to save it again. Now I'm going to open up the SOS one. Sorry, we have to do one more thing here. Sorry about that. Even though I edited it on the main thing, we have to change this as well. And I'm going to look right on here how I did it. Same thing where you do all the way up until the games share. So we're going to change this right here. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's an improper copy and paste there. I'm sure you guys have all done that before. You know, copy that. Make sure it copies this time. So we got that accounted for. So we changed the exact command here to where it should go. The path for the profile and the name. And when I do SOS, we'll, we won't make the same mistakes twice. So now we're going to do SOS. And I have these set to the most currently out there here. So we have SOS there. We're going to edit the desktop file. I'm going to make that SNES Classic SOS. We're going to change this exec path. Right up until the actual folder it's in. And that's correct. Then we want to change this profile path to have the forward slash on the zero. And we're going to save that. Now we're going to go into the actual thing again. And we have to do the same thing here. Get rid of that whole initial command line. Now I'm just going to add the save state rewind right on top of that. And that will just make it volume 85, blah, 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 with the 16 seconds. And some of the RPGs have like five minutes, so we got all that. Now one thing to know, if you do mess with this, you're going to get a couple error messages, such as hashi temp not found and all that, but you'll find that it still works. Like right now, I have RetroArch installed on here, but it's... Still not working properly, it's going to need a little more work, such as running games from the main GUI. You could run them from RetroArch itself and choose the games, but it's going to take a little bit of more legwork getting it going all the way. But I have more projects to focus on right now, such as getting V2.5 released. So we have these two games here. Obviously, when you move over to a new hashi, the best thing to do is flash your custom kernel, and then you're going to want to flash games. So we're going to flash these two and see if I got them over properly. I mean, if I made a mistake, I'll come back in here and fix it. And then we'll try again. But SOS and Run Saber, let's see what happens. Now we're going to boot up the SNES and see if the games show up. Now I'm going to do one more reflash.
And you get to be introduced to a couple bugs here. It doesn't always flash properly, so I'm shutting the system off completely right now. Now I'm going to turn it back on. Then I'm going to flash the system again. And it's good to see bugs like this transpire because you learn how the whole process works. Notice my uh, Run Saber and SOS have missing art right now because the command line and the configuration is incorrect. But we're going to try to run SOS right now. And we have it running. And we can fix the art with a reflash. You just have to change the directory that it goes to. And this is one of my absolute favorite games on SNES. It's an old survival game where you're basically on a ship like the Titanic and you have roughly an hour to save as many people as you can and get the hell off the ship. I mean, I went into a video game store, found this in a bargain bin for about 10 bucks. I got this and Run Saber and they were both phenomenal games. After I show you this game, I'm going to show you how to properly change the command line so the art registers correctly in a reflash. But I would highly suggest you try this game out if you like survival games. It's just a, a great game and I wish they'd do a re-release of this. I'm going to turn off that pesky light off in the background real quick. What's really, really interesting about this, and this is a little bit of a spoiler alert, so if you don't want to know the minor spoiler, just cover your ears for the next five seconds. The ship overturns and crazy stuff ensues as you go through the game. But if you want something different, an underrated gem that you may have never heard of or even played, check this game out. SOS made by Human Entertainment, and let's see if the other game runs, uh, Run Saber. So we got Run Saber, and we have a C7 error, that means that I have some part of the configuration incorrect right now. So I just have to go back and change like a part of the configuration. So we have missing art and the misconfiguration right now. Then we have Final Fantasy 2. Let's see if that runs. Now it's run fine. I have the artwork proper and the command line proper. So like I said, this is going to take just a little bit of patience and know-how to get this thing going. And another thing that's a little bit odd, and I'm going to show you this when I go back to the computer for a second here. So we have SOS with the incorrect art right now. We're going to go into that configuration file for it. And where the icon is right there, I'm going to remove this NES Kakachachi. Now what happens is, uh, actually since this is not the official version right now, it changes two perimeters on here. It changed my profile path, and it does this automatically. I tried making it so it would be read-only, but then it crashes the emulator. So, I mean, you don't want to do that. So, I'm doing this double forward. Then I remove that NES Kaki Chachi, whatever. I know, I'm never going to get that pronounced right. I'm going to save this. And I'm going to do a quick reflash, and we'll see if that makes it in.
Then we had something wrong with my run saber. We're going to see if I can troubleshoot that as well. See what I did there. I'm just going to copy this entire... It's probably the part in here that I did wrong, but I'm going to copy this entire command line down to this text file and see what we have here. It may also be a game that's unsupported without other perimeters being changed. So that's the same right there, but I'm going to open up the desktop file as well and see what we have there. I'm just going to copy this entire com thing here and see what we have. See if there's any kind of distinct difference here. And I'm going to take one of my previous ones, which would be Mega Man and Base, which works just fine. And I'm going to copy that right below it and we're going to do a little comparison here. Notice the difference here? I don't have the word games on there. There we go. So I'm going to add games. And I'm going to change that executive command there. Now we have games on there. And then we're going to change where the art goes. Change that profile. Save it. I'm going to do one more reflash here. And hopefully the, they both got fixed. We have Run Saber art and SOS art. Now we're going to see if Run Saber works because I added the proper command line. And it works. I'm happy right now. Now we're going to play this awesome Strider like game on the SNES Classic. Highly recommended. I got this along with SOS. This is a fantastic two-player game. Now again, like I'd, I'd like to disclaim that I would highly recommend just waiting until the official hack sheet comes out next week or two, because a lot of these bugs are going to be ironed out by then. I would recommend this only for intermediate to expert users. I mean, I myself am going to be more focused on finishing up the stuff I'm doing on the NES Classic. I just want to show you guys how this was done, because a lot of people are posting videos and pictures for bragging rights and you know it's a lot more fun to know how things are done that's what I'm doing here today but just remember these uh, configuration files and the desktop files are being changed by Hackshi so if you know the two main things that change which would be the profile as well as the path for the artwork you know how to change those two there's two things you could do one you could have a separate directory where you just copy all your desktop files over and then you can copy and paste them over when you do the reflashes if you need to or you can just edit them quickly. It takes about five seconds to re-edit them once you know what you need to do. And I'm going to show you the edit on one of these one more single time before I shut the video down. So remember in the desktop file you're going to want to have, I'm going to open up another one, just as a way to show you this. Just open up a random one, like Super Star Wars, and see if that one got changed by Hashi. That one got changed as well. So you're going to go into the path, and right after the zero, you're going to want to add that forward slash. Then you want to go into the icon. And you're going to want to remove this whole section right here. So it should be share games right up to there. 
I mean, if you have any questions, you could ask me, but it really is not that complicated, and I was getting a little weary of seeing people bragging about this. I mean, at least show how it's done so people can understand whether or not it's worth the risk. I would personally say just wait a week or two because it's going to become so much easier. Cluster, Mad Monkey, Honey Lab, other people are just doing everything they can to make this a phenomenal experience for you all, but... Right now I have SOS and Run Saber, and I'm just going to leave these as the, as the main games to play right now because I love both games. And I'm going to get back to modifying the NES Classic. Hope you enjoyed the video. There